Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about pelvic binders. So like any medical advice video that I'm doing, it is for entertainment purposes and educational purposes only. Only perform these procedures if you are specifically trained in them. A YouTube channel does not necessarily count. So we talk a lot on this channel about external hemorrhage, so your tourniquet application, your wound packing, chest seals, etc. However, there are a lot of situations where you won't have external bleeding, you'll actually have internal bleeding. Generally speaking, there's not a whole lot we can do in the pre-hospital environment for these cases unless we, one, carry blood or have a surgeon on our staff that's able to intervene at the point of the injury. There is one exception, that's going to be in your pelvic injuries. So your pelvic girdle sits right below the abdomen and is a very, very vascular area. In cases where you have an extreme impact, so the case they always give you in EMT or paramedic school is going to be somebody riding a motorcycle, they hit something in front of them, slide forward, and then the gas tank actually cracks their pelvis. It can be from a fall or another motor vehicle injury most commonly. This will cause what's called an open book pelvic fracture, an unstable pelvis. And that's when this bone that generally sits just like this cracks and you have one or both sides come out, causing this to be severed on either side. This is extremely detrimental because your pelvis can actually hold up to three liters of blood or half the body's blood volume in an average adult. So admittedly, in my portable kits that I make, I am lacking pelvic binders. And that is something that I am going to change in the very near future with this actually in front of you. Now, pelvic binding is best done with a commercial device. One of the better ones on the market, in my opinion, is going to be the SAM pelvic sling because it's super easy to use and actually gives you some feedback when you get to the right tightening. Uh, but you can also use a blanket, and I'll demonstrate both of those in this video. So with a commercial device, the goal is to take this, put it around the pelvis, and then you tighten it. And like I just said, what that will do is that will take the pelvis that's been an open book, it's been opened up, and it's going to bring it back into an anatomical position. And that's going to minimize bleeding by one, reducing the space in that cavity so there's not as much blood can fill up in the pelvis. And number two, it's going to kind of connect those bone ends back together, bring things back where they're supposed to be, and hopefully we'll provide some tamponade to those patients. Pelvic binders have not been extensively studied in the pre-hospital environment. We know they reduce bleeding, but we don't have good data su to suggest that they are in fact reducing mortality. That being said, they are the standard of care, they are the gold standard, um, and I'm guessing that when more science comes out, when more studies have been performed, we will find these to be making a huge impact on our patients. So let's go through the steps of applying the SAM pelvic sling. Step number one, you're going to want to feed it under the patient's knees. This is a really easy way to get something under a patient because there is a little bit of a gap there. You're then going to take this and you're going to slowly jimmy it up under the patient to the greater trochanters. So it's centered on the greater trochanters. You're going to take the strap, feed it through the buckle, and you're going to use the loop on both ends to pull it tight. We don't want to be providing torsion to the patient that could injure them further. Once you pull it tight, you're going to hear a click. And when you hear that click, you're going to put the strap down and adhere it to itself. This is going to keep it stabilized. Now, last but not least, you need to put them on a backboard or a scoop stretcher to keep that from displacing and to keep the pelvis stable. That is a very important step for the pelvic binder. Now, the steps for applying a improvised pelvic binder, such as a sheet, are very much the same, except it's a little bit more cumbersome. So you're gonna feed the sheet up under the patient's knees, jimmy it up to the greater trochanter, and you're going to pull up and over, across, so you're providing that same squeeze that the SAM pelvic binder is providing. You're then going to tie a knot, keeping that tension on the sheet as best you can. Now, I have found that an improvi improvised pelvic binder is very hard to apply and keep that traction in place. It can be augmented if you have a scoop stretcher that's a little bit concave. If you wanna put that under the patient, that will provide a little bit more of that support to keep the pelvis in the right position. 
So some of the indications for a pelvic binder. As you go down your physical assessment, you're gonna to go to the iliac crest and you're gonna push down. If you feel any movement there, that's an indication of an unstable pelvis, they should get a pelvic binder. If you feel their pelvis and it feels like marbles, once again, pelvic binder. However, a lot of times in the pre-hospital environment, it's a lot more insidious than those two really obvious findings. So we are, find ourselves placing these based on mechanism of action, more than almost any other traumatic intervention. So if you have a patient with massive multi-systems trauma, throw a pelvic binder on them. If they have massive lower extremity damage of any kind that could have been applied by a diffuse force, throw a pelvic binder on them. And then if you have a traumatic situation that's showing signs of hypovolemic shock, throw a pelvic binder on them. You're not going to hurt them by placing this. Now, it is important to note that this is not indicated for a hip fracture. So your little old lady that has a rotated leg um, that's in a lot of pain after a fall, chances are that is not a pelvic fracture. They do not need one of these applied. Guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.